the Tom's River Show. Pat O'Melia here. You concerned Tom's River resident? That's why we do this show. And you can watch it on Comcast, channel 190. You can watch it on Livestream.com. You can watch it on our website, HMG TV Shows. You can watch it on YouTube. You can watch it on your uh, Facebook. You can watch it wherever you, wherever you have a web-enabled device. But we're going to break for commercial, but we're going to talk about uh, the Dune Project and Seaside Heights, speed limit on the parkway, transportation uh, upgrades in New Jersey, and attracting and keeping teachers here in New Jersey. We'll be right back. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Monarchy Car Care. Conveniently located at 700 Tunnelly Avenue, Jersey City, half a mile north of County Road. Meineke, bumper-to-bumper car care. Brakes, exhaust, oil change, wheel alignments, batteries, CV joints, and so much more. First-rate service at a price you can afford. All major cards accepted. Apply for a Meineke card. Meineke, Jersey City. Stop by and let Sammy check your brakes for free. We're back. You're watching the Tom's River Show. I'm Pat O'Melia. You know who you are. You're a Tom's River resident. That's why you watch this show. Like I said, uh, you know, you got the website, it's HMG TV Shows. If you need to get in touch with me, uh, you got a story, you got a problem, we're pretty good with consumer issues. We can help you in Tom's River. We can reach out for uh, Tom Kelleher. We just had uh, Councilman at Lodge, Mo Hill, on the show. You can see that on our website or you go YouTube, whichever way you want to look at it, and watch the show. Uh, it was a late edition. See, I taped this show on the weekend, and then when we're in our other North Jersey studio, we shoot this in Seaside Heights in, um, in the Ready to Roll Studios, and then we finish the show up at Hudson Media Studios in North Jersey. So uh, if we're going to do a live interview, we may grab that live interview in North Jersey, then we cut it into the show. Because, you know, these guys are busy. You can't nail them down to get here at a certain time. So we give them a lot of wiggle room. We do it by webcam. It's convenient, and you get a lot of guests that way. So please, go uh, to our website. You can see last week, Mo Hill. Not only is he a councilman at large, he's a great guy. I, I want to get him involved in the show as much as possible. He's a dentist. He's a retired admiral. He's a council at large, and he, he, he seems like a great guy, great personality, so I hope to have him involved in the show quite a bit. Seaside Heights. I'm a Jersey City guy, but my other adopted city is Seaside Heights. I try to work with uh, Mayor Boz and the council and administrators here as much as I can. There was a dune project. I'm sure you're all aware of it. You know, it's because of Sandy. Uh, five years ago, Sandy caused uh, havoc down here in Seaside Heights and in Tom's River, of course. Uh, Mo Hill said about 10% of the rateable bases in Tom's River are still off the books from Sandy. I thought it was a higher number. Uh, Seaside Heights is still like $200 million off the books. Uh, so Seaside Heights needs all the help it can get. What it cannot sustain is another hit like Sandy. So there's the Dune Project, and then uh, the Corps, Army Corps engineers are doing it up all along the coast here in New Jersey. Um, they were supposed to start here in Seaside Heights in November. Here we are, I'm taping the show in the beginning of February, and the only thing that's begun is Seaside Heights removed the access ramps to the, to the beach. Army Corps hasn't been here yet. And the dune they're going to put in is 18 feet in height. So you can almost say goodbye to the ocean. You know, you'll be walking on the boardwalk saying, you know, I hear they used to have an ocean here one time, because that's going to be huge, 18 feet of sand. And for that matter, the walkways, where you used to walk down, now you're going to walk up on, it's going to be like a ramp, ramp going over this 18-foot dune to the ocean. I sincerely doubt we will see the ocean. And that's a sad and it's a shame, and it can't help tourism. See, I would wish in a town like Seaside Heights that depends so much on tourism, people try to compare it to uh, Adbury Park, it's not the same. Adbury Park is a different type of city. I, I, I uh, subscribe to Adbury Park as Jersey City with a boardwalk. There is an urban center. There is basically a city at Asbury Park here. It's really a short town in Seaside Heights. 
they are extremely dependent on tourism. Tom's River is, is extremely dependent on that tourism coming to Seaside Heights down Route 37. This dune, <clears throat> I'll leave it to the Seaside Heights. I think it, it's detrimental to uh, tourism. I would have preferred to see something that was removable, something we can roll back out there uh, beginning in October and take down so you can see the ocean, but I guess that's not feasible, even though they can make uh, dome stadiums with retractable roofs. You know, something we could interlock after Columbus Day, but I guess that's not possible. Well, they haven't started it yet, and they began the project in Manilokan, I believe. Man Listen, Manilokan deserved it. It's the town that got hit the hardest from Sandy. I don't think there's one house in Mantelokan that wasn't damaged from sand. It looked like there was something nuclear happened over there, like their houses were upside down. They deserved it. But maybe when you were planning how to do these dunes, Mantelokan, number one, they deserved it. They got hit hard. After that, towns that depend on tourism should have been next on a priority list. Seaside Heights should have been higher on that list for the dune project, because here you are, you're in February, there, delayed and the delay is that thing you have weather issues guess what you're in new jersey yeah we have weather issues we have all four seasons uh they had dredging issues getting sand dredging sand out of the ocean for the dunes they had mechanical issues well i which i will assume is the dredging machine getting sand out of the ocean um they had personnel uh, issues they is what basically happened they overestimated the completion date of these projects. I mean, they, they, were, they must have planned this out as if they were doing it in the summertime. There would be no issues at weather or anything like that. And there would be no issue at all. Everything would go perfect. A perfect world, a utopia. No, and they didn't take any of that into consideration. Seaside Heights, if this is going on during the tourism season, detrimental, damaging, devastating here. So Seaside Heights may file suit to delay it. If they can't get it done before Memorial Day, you can, and boy, that's really rolling the dice. <laughs> you know, you want to come down to the beach, enjoy the beach, they're out there dredging, you're not enjoying the beach. If they, can, if they can't do that, then hold it off till September, or at least after uh, the beginning of October. But then you got to get it done. But then, guess what? October brings the hurricane season and the nor'easters, that sort of thing. So it's a tough one. You want to roll the dice, there's no hurricane, that's a possibility. But this is really bo bad planning, and like I said, with the, the height of this dune, th th there should have been another idea on how we can do this. All right, we're going to break for commercial. You're watching the Tom's River Show. I'll be right back. Panapinto Properties, Jersey City. Shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces that address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Good Friends Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friends Self Storage, let us be your good friend. We're back. You're watching the Tom's Rubber Show. I'm still here. I got three more segments to go. You're watching it because you're a Tom's Rubber resident. Don't forget the websites. Don't forget you can tweet me at JC Hudson Media. Hopefully Mikey's got all that's going on at the bottom of the screen, the website, HMG TV shows, uh, our ID on live stream and then YouTube and all that stuff. So you can enjoy that. And like I said, go to the website, HMG TV shows. You can send me an email there if you got a consumer issue, you got a problem in... Um, Tom's River, you got a problem in Ocean County? Hey, we're pretty good. I'll talk to Joe for Carrie. I can talk to Tom Kelleher. I can talk to your senators and assembly people. But I'm not, I think we're talking to Assembly Wolf trying to get some assistance. Um, federal proposal, Cory Booker is involved in this. I like Cory, uh, former mayor of Newark. He likes to talk. He likes being on TV. You know, they, people talk about him being the next governor, that sort of thing. If there's a camera there, he's interested. Um, Possibly next president. There's talk about him running. Everybody's going to run for president next time around. They're talking about Oprah, you know, everybody's brother. Everybody's got any kind of name of value because you don't have to be a politician anymore. 
Anybody can run. Anybody can run. We're, we're already seeing the results of that. Now, I'm not knocking Trump, but I watched the State of the Union address, and while I'm watching this, I'm thinking, you know, my vocabulary is better than Trump's. And that's not saying a lot because people have drinking games watching my show with words I'll mispronounce or misuse. I'm watching this, and he said uh, reciprocal. And I said, well, you know, that's it. I'm back to the end of the line. They're proposing feds, Cory Booker, Senator Cory Booker, in an effort to keep and attract teachers in New Jersey, and we're losing teachers every year. Uh, and the reason Cory Booker, Senator Booker, has stated is the cost of living. It is so expensive to live in New Jersey. Everything is so expensive. And the teachers are having a hard time making ends meet on their salaries. Uh, what he's proposing are tax cuts for our teachers, uh, making grants available for our teachers, uh, student loan credits, or student loan forgiveness, depending on how long they teach in New Jersey. Now, all this sounds good, but remember, the reason they're citing is the cost of living in New Jersey. Now, I want to throw this out here. New Jersey teachers are amongst the highest paid in the nation. The average elementary teacher in New Jersey makes $68,000 a year. The national average is $54,000, uh, 55000 High school teachers in New Jersey, it's an average of $74,000 a year. National average, $58,000. Now, listen, if you're making fifty eight dollars and you're teaching in, say, Alabama, you're living better than a governor is down there. Yes, there is a high cost of living in New Jersey, but is it fair to issue these type of credits to keep teachers here, but what about the other professions? You know, uh, what about keeping doctors and nurses in New Jersey? Uh, police, fire, uh, contractors, all sorts of walks of life are having a hard time making it in New Jersey. And again, the reason cited is the cost of living in New Jersey. Well, instead of trying these unique workarounds or incentives or cuts or, um, you know, give backs, whatever, you want to, whatever terms you want to use, maybe, again, we try to get the House in order. This is going to be a theme we have here, and this is where Governor Murphy, he's got a tough job. But the thing is, Governor Murphy controls everything. It's a Democratic Senate. It's a Democratic Assembly. It's a Democratic governor. It's not eight years of Christie and the Dems. There's no uh, dancing going on. You know, these Murphy can sit with Sweeney and Coughlin, and they can all work together. There's no animosity yet. You want to keep the teachers here and, and, and try to be fair to all professions. We need to get a handle on the cost of living in New Jersey. And that's for me, you, the teachers, the doctors, the, the woman working at ShopRite, the, the construction guy working on a parkway right now. We need to get a handle. We need to get the house in order. We are the most expensive state. We're number one in most taxes and most expenses. There's something wrong with that. Now, we have to look at every expense and how you can cut it. Now, there's good revenue streams in here, because you know, later in the show, we're gonna, I'm going to talk about the state crying poverty. You know, listen, Atlantic City, that thing was, we were pumping that baby for money. Oh, man, that was great until that ran that well dry. The Meadowlands, the New Jersey lottery, you know, we privatized, it, don't move by Christie, privatized the lottery. I think it's a 10-year deal. Actually, lottery, I understand, is not even close to making the money it used to. Uh, you got pot sales coming in, possibly. You got sports betting, possibly. There's a lot of revenue streams. And New Jersey's got revenue streams. But we got paralyzing expenses. Somehow we have to go back and look and say, how can we control the expenses? How can we cut things? And again, it's a theme through all these Tom's River shows and the Jersey City show host, shared services. Now, the state can share with the feds, the state can share with the county, the state can share with municipalities. There's a lot of ways we can cut expenses. That's how you keep the teachers. That's how you make New Jersey affordable, by trying to get the house in order. And I think Phil Murphy can do this. All right, we're going to break for commercial. You're watching the Tom's River Show. I'll be right back.
Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path Subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or a quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. We're back. You're watching the Tom's Runner Show. Why? Because you like it. Why? You probably need a life. But yeah, you're watching the Tom's Runner Show. We try to inform, educate, entertain. You can watch us Saturday and Mondays here in uh, Tom's River on Channel 190. And of course, you can watch it on our website, on YouTube. For that matter, I couldn't find the Tom's River show with Mo Hill. I had to call my editor and say, yeah, it's on there. We got to figure out how to, we got too much on the YouTube channel. There's like 206 HMG shows on there. So we should probably cut some of that. And also we just discovered today, now we're, we're really embracing the streaming services. Cause you know, I'm starting to wonder about my cable network. So I'm also on Optimum, which is awful, awful, awful. Optimum is awful. Comcast is pretty good. Optum and awful. So we're, we're really starting to look into our streaming. So if you're on Facebook or YouTube, like us, subscribe to us, whatever you, you do there. Um, somewhere during May, we will take a very close look at streaming versus um, cable. If anything, I'll probably stay with Comcast because Optimum is awful. Absolutely awful. Altice awful. That's the parent company. There's a petition, and i got to find out where I sign it to raise the speed limit on the Garden State Parkway from 65 to 75. I'm all in favor of that. Thanks to Chris Christie, uh, again, I'm in Ocean County, so 70% voted for God, Gardano, so I'm sure I'm okay when I say thanks to Chris Christie here. Uh, he really invested in the parkway on uh, in the roads. He was doing you know, the, the uh, Skyway in Hunter County. All these road projects started under Chris Christie, the widening, of the parkway, which can only help Tom's River and Seaside Heights in the future. You know, remember the old days when I was a kid coming down the shore? Oh, that was terrible. It was like constant traffic all the time. It took forever to get here. I can get here from Jersey City to Tom's River, you know, Seaside Heights, in like an hour. You move it up to 75, I can get here quicker. Because, yes, and the people are saying, you know, who are against it, well, you know, if you raise it to 75, they're going to do 85. Yes, we are, because <laughs> we're, we're Jersey people. Yes, we, we will do 85, but it's a safe 85. This is the, high, you know, the Autobahn in Germany, this is a speed limit. It, there are parts in, New, in the states, of other states here in the United States, where it's like 85, 90. You know, here, we, you know, we were 55 for a long time because of the gas crisis stuff. Today's cars and the parkway the parkway is in pretty damn good shape far better than the turnpike which i'm going to probably finish on a few shots at the turnpike on this segment yeah we can do 75 wink 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 85. the cars are so much more better than they were 10 years 20 years ago it's not like i'm coming down with my 64 dodge you know the drum brakes and all you know, even I, I came down today in my old van. It's a 1989 Chevy van. That thing has disc brakes. You know, their cars, especially the new things. You know, the new cars, the 2016, 2014, 2018, these things are really fine pieces of engineering. They are safe to operate. They got great brakes, great track. They got sensors all over. Yes, the Parkway can handle 75, wink, 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 85, you know. Yeah, yeah, getting down here is such a pleasure now. And I tell you, it's, it has changed over the last 10 years coming down here. It is, it is a pleasure to come down here now. Yeah, now you can't wait to get off the turnpike to get on the parkway because, you know, <laughs> you can move. Um, the only problem I see on the parkway 
you see a lot of trooper nest. You know, they're cutting like little uh, U-turns into the, the grass islands. So they're planting trees so you can't see the, the troopers there. You know, it's a game. Of, it's, we're Jersey. That's what we do. We, we, we know where you're hiding. We'll figure it. The more and more I come up and down the parkway, the more and more I figure out the, uh, where the police are. And, of course, there's technology. They're using technology. So I haven't had a fuzz buster in my car since probably the 90s. I'm sure them buzz buses are really good now. So you can probably get one of them. They got all sorts of gadgets you can get on uh, uh, Amazon that you can put pop up, you know, screens on your windshield. I'm sure they got some really good fuzz busters, you know. And the work they're doing on a the parkway, they're doing it up on 127 right now as you get into the uh, the Driscoll bridges. That's your fuel tax money. Remember, we boosted it at about 30 cents a gallon. But that was being done even before. So now they got some extra cash here. If anything we need to do, modernize something on the parkway, is exit 82. Well, that's, that's an old-type Jersey circle there where I got people entering the parkway on the same lane that I'm exiting the parkway. As you're coming off the, the widened parkway, you get down to the right lane, and that gets a little gamey. And that is one really sharp circle there. But if you're used to it, it's not a problem. But unfortunately, not everybody is used to that. You know, somebody just took out a light pole on um, 80, exit 82 there. New, but the New Jersey Turnpike, I, I question management there now. There are potholes on the Turnpike. You know, it's one thing to hit a pothole on Hopper. It's another thing to hit a pothole on a Turnpike doing 65, wink, wink, 75 miles an hour. That's deadly. And these are big potholes. So in the old days, you know, the turnpike was the road. That's not the case anymore. All right, we're going to break for commercial. You're watching the Tom Dribber Show. I'll be right back. Rama Jewelers, located in the Lyndhurst Shopping Center at 413 Valley Brook Avenue, Lyndhurst. Come for all your jeweler needs at Rama Jewelers, where you will find a fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and bracelets. Choose from one of our complete sets, our many signature items, or find the perfect engagement ring. Come on down. That's Rama Jewelers at 413 Valley Brook Ave, Lindhurst. Call 201-939-5784 or visit us online today. The Jersey City Medical Center. You know it for its award-winning, life-saving ambulance service. It's also your health hub. With health and wellness locations staffed with certified professionals all through Hudson County. The Jersey City Medical Center. Here to help you with your healthy. Here when you need us the most. The Jersey City Medical Center. Visit us on the net to learn more. Jersey City Medical Center, Robert Wood Johnson, Barnabas Health Facility. Let's be healthy together. We're back. You're watching the Tom Dribber Show. Pat O'Melia here. You're a Tom Dribber person. Yeah. Somewhere along the line, I can trace you to Jersey City, where I come from. My kids bought a house down here in Seaside Heights. I just checked on a house. Um, President Trump, during his state of the union speech, which I watched, and it was like really long. But you can always tell when Trump gets off script, starts going like, he's such a beautiful American, a great American, great beautiful Americans. That's when he's getting off script there. He speaks of the 1.5 trillion infrastructure plan, uh, mainly tunnels, bridges, that sort of thing. Guess what? We need all that. But as he pitched it, it's partnership with the states and the counties and the local government and private industry. Now, I assume when he's saying private, I, you know, I, I don't know if I'm going to get Amazon to invest because if there's private entities in there, they got to get their money back, so that means tolls. Or he's talking like the, you know, the, the Port Authority, the Delaware uh, Turnpike Authority. That, that's different. That, you know, if he's talking about authorities. This makes sense to me. You know, like, you know, if, if you got to pay back the loans or the bonds on a turn, like the turnpike's supposed to be toll free. <laughs> it's never going to be toll free. But after its initial bonds were paid off, it was going to be toll free road. Become part of the interstate. But they kept rebonding and rebonding, and you know, you're never going to get out of the bonds on a turnpike. Uh, but that's supposed to be a free road. Now, my guy, Robert Menendez, Bob Menendez, who, by the way, uh, the complete thread just dropped all the charges on Bob. Now, I've been covering Bob for the last 20 some odd years from his days as a congressman, but he was a mayor in Union City. Bob's seen how people get jammed up. 
Bob was never going to be convicted. If Bob was convicted, guilty of anything, it was maybe bad bookkeeping. That was it. But he, you know, Bob would never put a dime in his pocket. And when people say, well, he was helping this uh, eye doctor, Bob helps everybody. You call Bob's office, somebody's going to get back to you, and they're going to get involved with whatever your issue is. So that wasn't surprising. And as far as taking trips with this guy, you know, I, 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 in what I do here at the studios, you know, there's a friend of mine, Joe Panapinto. Joe Panapinto and I go to lunch. I'm not picking, I'm picking up the tab. Joe's picking up the tab. He's very successful. So usually the most successful person picks up the tab. And these guys were friends, the eye doctor and Bob, for years and years. So, you know, yeah, I got something going on. I'm taking my friends. I'm not charging my friends. But that's neither here. The only reason I bring up Bob, Bob made mention as well. If, just think of Eisenhower said back in the 50s, well, we got to get the local states and communities to help pay for the, uh, the interstate, what was it, the national, national highway system that Ike instituted back, I don't know, 50, 54, I think? And boom, that's where our interstate, you know, the odds and even routes and all that started. But Ike had that as really a way to move the military. But we were still, yeah, we were all coming off World War II, the Cold War was going on. Ike was thinking, how can I get tanks and equipment from one end of the country to the other? We didn't really connect that well. But there were two benefits to that. Okay, the military, I don't, I don't see us moving tanks on the highways, but, but you know, he, he opened the interstates, he built these roads, these highways, the feds did it. That started a boom time in the 60s. That started people moving from the uh, cities into the suburbs. Yeah, you know, they forced baseball teams and football teams to relocate because like the Dodgers were losing the fan base. They, that's why they moved to the West Coast and there's also a guy, Robert Moses, wouldn't build them a new stadium. But things change. Yeah, there can be a partnership. And again, we're talking about can the states help the feds build highways or the arc tunnel? And uh, we need that other tunnel. That's, that's a definite. Yeah, there has to be a partnership. And when you talk about states like New Jersey, we shouldn't be in the poverty. We shouldn't be crying poverty. We should have money. We have ways of generating money. And they're going to continue to grow, like I said earlier, with the marijuana sales and sports betting. We need to get the house in order. Yeah. The Gateway Tunnel, get the feds pay half, get New York State to pay half. Jersey's in there. You're going to have tolls on there, and it's, you know that's, there's going to be some fee to go through that tunnel. It'll pay itself. But there has to be cooperation between everyone and the politics. You know, like I said in the previous shows about the horse trading in the old days with the Republicans and Democrats, how do you get things done? And maybe that's what Trump is proposing here. But it won't get done if everybody draws the line in the sand and says, oh, we can't help or we're not going to pay for things that are, affect our state. But the first thing Phil Murphy has to do, our new governor, is get the House in order, that we're not the number one state when it comes to taxation and debt. That I think Phil Murphy can do. All right, we're out of show. You be good, you be safe. Don't forget, YouTube, our websites. I'm Pat O'Melia. I'll talk to you during the week. Good night.